بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن والاه أما بعد This is our 29th lesson going through the book المقدمة الآج الرومية في علم النحو الحمد لله We are still in باب المنصوبات We've taken the مفعول به The مفعول فيه Which of course is ضرب زمان and ضرب مكان We've taken the مفعول مطلق which comes from the مصدر. We've taken the حال, the تمييز, the استثناء, اسم لا, and in this lesson we are going to take المنادى. المنادى linguistically refers to the thing that you're calling out to, that you want to approach you. So you can define it as someone whom you require to approach you. And the way that you show that you want them to approach you is through the usage of a vocative particle, such as ya, or one of its siblings. And we call ya, ya, and nida. Ya, and nida. The ya that shows calling out. And we find a lot of it in the Quran. Mathalan, ya Musa la takhaf. O Musa. So the English version is the, the letter O. Right? O Musa. Ya Musa. طيب أقبل ولا تخف right يا محمد أخبرني عن الإسلام like we have in the hadith of Jibreel and so المنادى is the one who is being what called upon or the one whom is being required to approach you the one who is calling and so in the case of يا محمد المنادى is محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم and the one doing the calling is Jibreel عليه السلام and in the case of Ya Musa, Aqbil wa la takhaf, Ya Musa, Musa is the Munada, the one who's being called to come closer to approach. And then you have the one who is doing the calling is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so Ya or one of its siblings is called the vocative particle. And its siblings include, Mathalan, the Hamza, in Mathalan, Azaydu Aqbil. O Zaid, come closer. Or it could also refer to the, the, the phrase A. So, مثلا, أي إبراهيم تفهم أو إبراهيم try to understand. Or, مثلا, أي عبد الله تعال أو عبد الله تعال. So, we have أ, همزة النداء. We also have أي and أي and we also have هيا هيا محمد تعال هيا محمد تعال. طيب. And so here, محمد is the منادى, the one whom is being called to come. طيب. And the vocal or the vocative particle is يا or one of its siblings. So you use ya or one of its siblings to call upon someone to approach you. And the one who's being called to approach is al munada. And so we're going to discuss the types of al munada and that they are of five categories as we will see inshallah in the next slide. So we have five types of munada. The first type is a single proper name al mufrad al alam. And this is, of course, we've taken the previous lesson what's meant by Mufrad, i.e. that which is not a Mudaf, nor does it resemble a Mudaf. And so that which is not considered a Mudaf, nor does it resemble a Mudaf, we consider it a Mufrad. And so it falls under this, on this type. And it must be Adam, i.e. a proper name. Example, Ya Muhammadu, Ya Fatimatu, Ya Muhammadani, Ya, Fatima, ya Fatimatani, Ya Muhammaduna, Ya Fatimatu. And the single proper name, when it falls as a munada, it will always be marfu'. It will always be marfu'. The second type is the al-nakira al-maqsuda, an intended indefinite noun. And so, for you are saying ya zalim. Zalim here is an indefinite noun, and so it encompasses anyone who has the characteristic of injustice and being unjust. But you want this um, uh, indefinite noun, and you're intending to use it. With with a specific person in mind, let's say, مثلا, Al Hajjaj ibn Yusuf. So you're standing in front of Al Hajjaj ibn Yusuf, and you want to call about, call out to him, and you want to describe him as being unjust or being an oppressor. And so you say, Ya Zalimu. And so when you say Ya Zalimu, here this word Zalim, it's a indefinite noun, but you're intending a specific person, a specific entity within that genus, within that. Um, species of people who have this characteristic of injustice and so you're saying ya zalimu and of course here the specific person is in, in our example al-hajjaj ibn yusuf 
And so again, the intended the indefinite noun, the nakira al maqsuda, it will also always be marfu'. It will always be marfu'. And you can also use it in the dual sense and also in the plural sense. مثلا, ya muslimani and ya muslimun. And you mean by it three individuals in the plural sense or two individuals in the in the um two specific individuals in the um dual sense. طيب. And these two types, the single proper name of the alam and nakira. المقصودة, it will always be marfu'. So when these two occur as the munada, they will always be marfu'. As for the remaining three types that you see, they will always be mansub. And so uh, let me just write it here, inshallah. These two is what? الرفع. So uh, I'll write الرفع with an R. And these three will always be what? Mansub. And so I'll put a noon or I'll put an N to show nasb. The third type is the unintended indefinite noun. النكرة غير المقصودة. And so this is مثلاً, you saying يا غافلاً تنبه. Let's say you have a bunch of students, right? And you and you know that there's a um, a group of students who are heedless, طيب. Uh, but you don't want to specify them in your what in your admonishing. And so you just keep it as a general advice. And so if the shoe fits, essentially wear it. يا غافلاً تنبه. Oh, a heedless one. Focus. Take notice. And so you leave keeping it general. It's a nakira. Ghafilan is a nakira, but it's what غير مقصودة. You're not intending by a specific entity within that group uh, of of heedless individuals. Rather, you're keeping it general, مثلا, uh, to maintain the the hearts of your of your students for you. طيب, as an example, and so you keep it what general nakira غير مقصودة. If it's a nakira غير مقصودة. And it's falling as a monada, it will always be mansub. And so you don't say ya ghafilu. Rather, you say ya ghafilan. Ya ghafilan tanabba. Good, that's the unintended um, indefinite noun. Then the fourth type is the mudaf. The fourth type is the mudaf. The mudaf, mathalan, ya talib al ilm. Taliba here is what? It's a mudaf. Al ilm is a mudaf al ilay. And so here, this term talib, it's a monada. And it will always be mansub. Ya talib al ilmi ijtahid. Ya talib al ilmi ijtahid. Ya talib al mali. Whatever you want to um, follow the sentence or end the sentence with. طيب. But here talib is a mudaf, and so therefore the mudaf it will be a mansub and it falls as a munada. As for that which resembles a mudaf, and we've spoken about this in the previous lesson, uh, a classic example, مثلا يا حميدا فعله يا حميدا فعله أو مثلا another example could be مثلا يا جاهلا أو مثلا يا حريصا على المال استقم مثلا and so you know here that this word حميدا and حريصا they are what شبيه من مضاف it's not technically a مضاف right but it is in the it resembles a مضاف because we know that there needs to be something which can either be mansub or marfu' or majroor that connects to it in order to complete the meaning. If you were to just say ya harisan, the sentence is not complete. There is something needed for it to come after, to connect to it in order for the sentence to become complete. Just like when I say ya taliba, ya taliba, this sentence is not what? It is not complete. It requires a mudaf ilay. So this act of being a student, a student of what? Likewise, say ya harisan, harisan upon what? What are you? Uh, يعني, what are you intending to strive in? And so it requires something to complete the sentence. And so this is a shabih bin mudaf. And whatever comes after it be a mansub, marfu' or majrur as opposed to the mudaf. Because whatever comes after the mudaf, the mudaf ilayh must always be majrur as we will see inshallah ta'ala in babu al-makhfurat min al-asma. However, in the case of shabih bin mudaf, what comes after it, it's needed to be there. It needs to be there. مثلا, يا حريص على الخير أقبل أو مثلا, يا حميدا فعله So فعله here it's on marfu' Right, but it's required in order to make the sentence ya hamidan um, praiseworthy in what? Praiseworthy in his actions. طيب. And so this term in actions or fi'luhu, it's required to connect upon hamidan in order for the sentence to make sense or in order for the meaning to become complete. However, fi'luhu, it's not considered the mudaf ilayh. And that's why it won't be what? Always majroor. Rather, it can take raf'a, nasb, or just depending upon what it is that you're connecting to the shabih bih al mudaf. And always shabih bih mudaf, if it occurs as a munada, it will be what? Mansur. So, Ya Hamidan Fi'luhu Ya Hari San Ala Al Khayri Aqabil. 
يا حافظا درسه يا محبا للخير and so on there are many other examples like that طيب so these are the five types of uh, or these are the five types of nouns that can come after the vocative particle and we call these five types of nouns all types of المنادى طيب والله تعالى أعلم هذا والله أعلم مصطفى بإذن الله سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته